can't shut him up. I've tried for 30 something years and it's not working. <laughs> he's, he's actually, he's really laid back. He's really generous. Um, he's very thoughtful and considerate of others. Although some people might not think that because he's a businessman as well, of course, you know, it goes both ways. But he really is one of the one of the kindest people that I've ever met, you know, and he, he has a really good heart and he does put people's feelings before his a lot of the time, you know. And he's a workaholic. If he if we go on vacation, he can't sit on a beach and do nothing. He'll sit on a beach, but he'll have his computer in front of him, or he'll be on the phone, or he'll be doing something. And that's fine with me, because I'm sitting next to him with a Mai Tai. I don't care what he does, as long as I'm sitting on the beach. So, <laughs> fine with me. <laughs> that's what keeps me going into, you know, the next, hopefully, five or so years, is that there's nothing better than being on the stage doing what you love anyway. And then all of a sudden, you look to your right, and you see your husband. I'm pointing with my left hand, by the way, when I said, you look to your right. <laughs> Let's Long moment. Right okay, look to your right. <laughs> this mirror image, I could get away with it that way. So you look to your right, and then I see my husband over there, and then I look to the left, and I see my son, 23 years of age, and I get an idea of how like the Jackson Five and the the Osmonds felt performing with each other because there's there's nothing like it. You can't beat it, and we all get along so well, and we have fun off stage as well as on stage. I don't think I would probably be doing as much as I do now if I had to travel by myself. If I didn't get to perform with them, I probably wouldn't do as much. But I'm just thoroughly enjoying it. It's such a rush. We've been together now. If I get this wrong, he's going to kill me. Thirty something years, I'll just say that. And so we started. I started performing with him, basically, really. And so he was my he was my crutch, if you like. You know, when I had no self confidence, at least if he was on stage with me, I'd feel a little more confident. And you know, it's, we've got so busy over the last couple of years that there are, there have been moments where we've been doing our own thing. You know, I've been doing ABBA, and he's been doing his Piano Man show. And Nick Arson has been doing D63 with you guys, and we've had to do stuff you know independently and that throws me yeah you know, i'm so used to having that you know uh, what you call it like a comfort blanket i guess you know with having those two around me that it kind of threw me a little bit it was weird not having at least one of them on the stage with me but you know i had to pull up my big girl knickers and get on with it so what what, what can you do <laughs> when i met terry we met in spain we're both from england he's from manchester i'm from liverpool we met in spain and i was over there as a tour guide basically staying and living in a hotel, taking people to and from the airport, selling tours. We had a Spanish band there, but we had a lot of European holiday makers. So Terry was brought over probably about six months after I'd started there to be the band leader. So he'd score out the music and he'd do some current up-to-date music. Plus we did shows, we had a small staff there, some of them sung. And you know, Terry said one day, you've got a voice, a good, pretty good voice, why don't you do a show? And I was mortified. I said, no, there's no way I can stand up on the stage and sing by myself. So I got up a couple of days later and my name was on the, the board and he said that I was gonna be guest appearing in one of the shows that were on and I was mortified. I literally spent three days on the toilet. Couldn't eat, can I say that? Well, I said it too late. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was sick to my stomach and I was terrified and he said all you got to do is go out just look above the audience and sing three songs that's all you have to do and that's exactly what I did I was like a mannequin I stood there one leg shook like Elvis because I had no control over it so fast song slow song didn't matter that one leg shook uncontrollably and I looked over the audience and I stared at something that wasn't even there and I sung three songs and it was like watching paint dry it was boring, but I mean, the audience knew what was going on, so they were really supportive, and I got a nice round of applause at the end of it. And, you know, he just kept doing that to me, just kept pushing me out on stage, you know, and I was it's like easy. a deer in the headlight. And it did, it did get easier in the end. Then we put together a duo, and we played in a piano bar at the end of the night. So we started building up a, a repertoire, and then, you know, we came over here in 84, I think it was, when we first came over. And we got a job working in a hotel chain up and down the west coast of America. And we had to do four hours a night of, of material. So, you know, we learned a whole lot of songs as a duo and we went out on the road and it just snowballed.